Hey guys, it's Chris from the Silver Symbol Channel, and in today's video, we're talking about crimp connectors and why more than 50% of them will ultimately fail. And it really doesn't have much to do with the tool itself. It's got to do more with a connector and a feature that you probably never noticed is there. And this applies to both insulated, as you see here, along with these uninsulated connectors. And if you're wondering, uninsulated connectors are really useful for high heat situations, things like your air conditioning system, where they're exposed to extreme temperatures. There are many different tools you can use to crimp these connectors. You can certainly get inexpensive ones like this, all the way up to ratcheting tools that nowadays don't really cost much more. But it's not the tool that makes these things fail more often, it is the crimp connector itself. Regardless of the brand, you might be shocked to learn that there is a true up and a down position for these crimp connectors. Uninsulated connectors like these are pretty much the same as insulated versions, but you're able to see the metal body along with this tiny seam. And that's where the failures begin because you need to orient your crimp connector properly into your tool. That gives you a 50-50 chance. Put it upside down and the crimp will never be made correctly. Manual crimp tools like this do a surprisingly good job because they exert a lot of force. You've got one side that kind of has that tooth along with the smoother receiver side. Well, let's see which way works better. Here we've put the seam facing up into that tooth and we'll try to crimp the connection down. And this clearly did not deliver a good result. Look at that connection, it is terrible. You've only got half of it folded down and those wires could easily be pulled out. Now I know you're thinking, big deal, I could just put it back in the tool and crimp it again. But the problem in real life is even worse than this because many people are going to use insulated connectors where you can't see what's going on underneath. And when we do the exact same crimp with this tool, you can see the end result surprisingly looks pretty good. But when we peek underneath, you can see that it is just as poor as it was when we used it on the uninsulated terminal. But the show isn't over yet. Let's flip that terminal over in the exact same tool and see what kind of a result we get. We've got the tooth biting into the flat portion of the connector. And look at the difference here, a perfect result. The same connector, wire, and tool. The only difference I made was reversing the connector inside the tool. The simple change is hardly ever talked about and I don't really know why because it will result in getting perfect connections every time. But what about these ratchet and crimpers? Are they really better? Well, the short answer is if you're gonna use insulated connectors, they absolutely are. Now the one here costs just about 25 bucks and it is an interchangeable head. You can use this for insulated, uninsulated versions and many other types of connectors. When you're crimping these insulated connectors, surface area is key. The more surface area you get on your crimp, the better their connection. Compared to the cheap connector, this thing can't even do an eighth of an inch. And on insulated connectors, these ratcheting tools definitely do a better job. The other big mistake people make is they're using the wrong size wire and the wrong connector. Look on the back of each one of these crimp connectors and you will see two different stamped numbers. That first 5.5-8, that's indicating in millimeters the size of the opening. The second number 10-12 is the wire gauge size that the connector is rated for. Now let's look at some finished results and see if you can spot the problems. Way too much wire extending into the fork spade. And additionally, I've got these stray wires coming out the bottom and this is a total flop. Externally, this one looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of wire extending onto the terminal and that's good. But the bigger problem is you can see the impression right into the seam resulting in another poor connection. This one externally is looking pretty good. It was clearly done with a ratcheting tool. You can see that smooth crimp, but it's got a bigger problem. There is no wire extending past the connection. You want to have at least a sixteenth of an inch of wire extending past it to ensure that you're getting a solid connection. And now for two perfect results. This is exactly what you want to strive for. This one of course is an uninsulated connector, crimped correctly using a manual tool. It's smooth on the seam side with a little bit of wire extending past the crimp and when we reverse it, you can see that telltale impression of the tooth ensuring that we got enough compression to give us a good result. And finally for the insulated connector, this one was done with a ratcheting tool. It's got the right amount of wire extending past the crimp and this is a perfect result. It's always easy to make a bad connection and you've got a 50-50 chance. Put that connector in your tool and it might work out or down the road it could fail you. So hopefully you'll follow this video and you'll get perfect connections every time you make a crimp. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.